This is Bumper to Bumper, the car show. Drive in anxious and cruise out confident with the best automotive information for your vehicle. And now your hosts, Matt Allen and Dave Riccio. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Bumper to Bumper Radio. I am Dave Riccio, and Matt Allen is off today. He's seeing his son's uh, soccer game, plays over at Brophy. they got a tournament or something going on. So we've got John Riggle, my lead diagnostician at Tri-City Transmission and Auto Repairs. Together, we're your KTR car guys. Bumper to Bumper Radio is heard every Saturday from 11 to noon. At Bumper to Bumper Radio, we're helping you, the motoring public, have a better overall car experience. So if you got car questions, we encourage you to give us a call at 602-277-5827, 602-277-KTAR. You can also text your questions to 411923. We're taking your phone calls today on the Bumper to Bumper Roadmap, of course, your text, and then how to handle your transmission. And before we get into that, John, good to have you here. Thanks. Thanks for coming in. Oh, yeah. And, and so John's a real technician. I just play one on the radio. So <laughs> if you guys have any questions, we're going to we're gonna talk a little bit about transmissions and how to handle them. Actually, we're going to talk a lot about transmissions, but we're really talking about anything here. So if you've got a, a squeak in your car or you've got some sort of weird vibration or you're thinking about buying a new car, anything related to your car, we can, we can help you out with that. But uh, today, transmissions, that's frequently asked question on the radio show. It's frequently asked question at our telephone at the shop. And there's so much confusion around transmissions and transmission services and how to take care of them. And John and I, do, we do a lot of diagnostic work together. Uh, and <clears throat> well, oftentimes, we're just road testing cars. Yeah. And over the last month, we had three... We're going to use Toyota today because we happen to have three Toyota products yep. that were in for what the consumer thought was a transmission. The yep. consumer thought, for sure, I need a new transmission. Yep. When they come in, their eyes are as big as beach balls. Yeah. And they're like, oh, you know what? I, I don't even like this car that much. Please don't <laughs> tell me it's going to be expensive because if it is, I'm not fixing it. So they all, all three of them said that right at the door. Uh, and... Uh, so we had a Toyota 4Runner, we had a Toyota RAV4, and we had a Toyota Tacoma. And they were all roughly about 10 to 12 years old, and they were all in that 120 to 140,000 mile range. And they were in our shop <clears throat> for uh, both of them, or all three of them really had a weird sensation, uh, yeah, they vibration. Were, they were all of, rumble strip vibrations, I think, is, is what it ultimately was. And what's funny about this is we, we, we drove them, we verified it, we verified what the problem was, and the problem was the transmission fluid was just worn out. Yep. Yep. And, and so uh, we're using Toyota because it really proves a good point for us because right before the show, John and I were toggling through our, our technician manuals and found this bulletin from Toyota, and it says 100,000-mile maintenance interval. This is for the automatic transmission fluid. And then it says hyphen inspection only. ATF WS, which is the Toyota fluid, does not require any flushing or changing during the life of the vehicle. So this is right out of their manual, 100,000 mile maintenance interval. Uh, the, the use of genuine Toyota ATF WS is recommended. So it gets into all this stuff. Well, that's one bulletin for that same Toyota, one of these that we're talking about here. Yeah. And uh, so John's like, well, go look at severe duty. So I go to the severe duty timetable. There it is right there. Change the transmission fluid at 60,000 60, miles. miles. Yeah. <laughs> no wonder you're the consumer. You drive a car. No wonder you're confused. You know why? Because there is so much BS surrounding Toyota marketing maintenance. And it's not just Toyota. They're not the only guilty party here. But I remember the Toyota, uh, Toyota commercial, and you did too, yeah. John. It's a picture of a Toyota truck off in the background. It looks beautiful with rolling green hills behind it. And then in front of it, there's only nine quarts of transmission fluid. And then the screen is split. And on the right half of the screen, there's a Chevrolet truck. And in front of that Chevrolet truck, there's 75 bottles of transmission fluid yeah and their point is we're like green people and yeah. our vehicles don't require maintenance because they're far superior or whatever you know it's all that implied bs that you see in marketing and uh so that that's the point 
But really, if you read, so I think this bulletin that says a fluid doesn't need to be changed is a BS bulletin because it contradicts the manual that says to service it at 60,000 miles for severe duty. And I don't know, yeah. they play that commercial in Arizona, but I don't oh, know yeah. if you know anything about Arizona. It's severe, right? Yeah, it's pretty much severe for most cars, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. So anyway, so these three cars, we had a Toyota RAV4, we had a Toyota 4Runner, and we had a Toyota Tacoma. And they were uh, in that, let me see what year range, but they were like, oh, 2008, 2006, yeah. somewhere in there. And literally, uh, we changed the transmission fluid and the problems went away. Yeah. So the point is, I get this phone call from people, hey, I got a Toyota in the dealership says not to service my transmission, but I hear you guys on the radio all the time talking about transmissions or servicing the transmission. Why? Because yeah. we fix transmissions with transmission service. It's, it doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't happen all the time. There's certain, there's certain cases and certain places where it's an appropriate thing to do, but um, it, it, it's critical. And that, that comes back to using the proper fluids is critical also. You wind up with the same kind of issues if they've got the wrong fluids in them. So that's, that's the point right there that, okay, so we get the confusion from the manufacturer because they're lying to us about what really needs to happen. Yeah. As far as maintenance and service. I had a guy the other day, he called me from uh, the Dodge dealership, 2017 Dodge truck, and he said, the dealership is telling me not to service it. Well, the new Dodge truck has an eight-speed transmission, and the transmission fluid in it is like literally $35 a quarter. Yeah. I mean, they're not giving this stuff away. And so they told him, don't service it. So uh, I looked it up. It required service at 60,000 miles. Yeah. So I don't know if the service writer didn't want to break the be the bearer of bad news that it costs five hundred dollars to service your transmission. I don't know if maybe they just don't want to do them there. I don't know why they didn't want to do it, but that's a dodge, you know. And then you can go to the next vehicle and the next vehicle, and mm -hmm. so everyone is confused. And I think <clears throat> the problem is is we have a lot of marketing, you know. I don't know about you, John. Have you always felt marketing to be a source of good information? No. <laughs> <laughs> I always read between the lines. You have to. Uh, what is the uh, motive here, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and I look at uh, the motive is, is, you know, back in the day as we built great cars, but now the motive, I think, when they're selling cars is ease of maintenance. Because well, you have to remember what a manufacturer's goal is. A manufacturer's goal is to sell cars. They don't sell repairs. They don't sell maintenance. That's handled by dealerships, which is a, a separate entity from the automotive manufacturer. So an automotive manufacturer, in their best interest, um, in order to get repeat customers, they want their cars to last a little while. Decent but they cars. don't want them to last forever because you're not going to buy another one if it lasts forever. So, you know, you have to kind of read between the lines mm. there. There's a goal here. And I'm going to add something to that. So they're in the business of selling cars. Yes, they are. But if I was looking at their at their financial statement, I would have to say new car sales, this much money. And then I would see parts sales, this much money. Oh, yeah. So if you don't take care of the car, uh, you don't maintenance it, and, and it breaks, it's a little thing I like to call a win-win. They either sell you yeah. a car, a new one, because you go buy another one. Yeah. They made it good enough that you're going to want another one. Or they get to sell you parts. So either way, they win. So their motives aren't necessarily genuine, I guess. Well, yeah. not in your best interest. They have genuine <laughs> yeah, motives. Yeah, there are genuine they motives in their genuine mind. Motives. Yeah, generally, it's, called, it's some... called making money, and you know that's that's how it works. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I grew up in an era where there was a picture of a guy jumping both feet off the ground, arms raised high, both sides, and he, you know, oh, what a feeling kind of commercial about the Toyota. You remember oh, yeah. those? Uh huh. Fantastic, because how many miles on it? And I think they're great vehicles. But I am going to pick on their marketing because your marketing is confusing people, and I'm trying to give you people the right information so that you know how to take care of your car. In the meantime, they're just muddy in the water, yeah. just muddy it up, muddy it up. So, as a consumer, you know, I know you're confused. You know, sometimes I was like, "Well, I'm a guy." You know, I literally have to leave this show and go back to my shop, and I have to just comb through some more owners' manuals to keep up to date. I got to go through since everything went to eight-speed transmissions. The price of transmission fluid has just gone through the roof. Oh yeah, you know. Yeah. And then the other thing I got is I got an auto shop down the street. In a, it's not just an auto shop. It's 99% of the auto shops down the street from me. They use a multi-fit transmission fluid. And this isn't like the generic. You know, you go to Walgreens and you say, hey, I need to get some uh, 
some Percocet or whatever the brand name uh, yeah. is, and then they go, oh, we got the generic. Well, the generic's the same it's stuff, right? chemically the same, yes. It's the same stuff. Yes. So you got the Advil, then you got the Walgreens uh, Ladvil, you know, something close, but it's yeah. not Advil, right? So generic transmission fluid, it isn't anything like Advil or Percocet or whatever you want, whatever brand name you want to use. It's not like, you know, the Viagra, you know, it's just blue pill kind of thing, but I don't, is there a generic? I don't know. So anyway, uh, the generic transmission fluids is what everybody's carrying because it's real simple. One size fits all. But, but there is not. There I'm in total. You cannot, you cannot meet every one of the specifications with one fluid. And I'll tell you what, people want to argue with me on this. And, uh, and people in my industry, and they've all bought the Kool-Aid. They've all been drinking it. And they're like, oh, yeah, Dave, uh, yeah, they guarantee the transmission. There's no problem. They'll take care of it. I go, okay, really, how much boron is in that fluid? Oh, I don't know. How much zinc? I don't know. How much calcium? I have no idea, Dave, but they say it works. Well, I tell you what, at Tri-City, we don't really believe everybody or the marketing. So we literally sent all yeah. 40 of our fluids out, and we had them tested at a lab. We used Lab 1, who happens to be down the street. You'll hear him on the show from time to time, and he told us all that. He gave us a little thumbprint of each oil. He gave us the additive package, the viscosities, all that. And they're all dramatically different. So I don't know. I want a hamburger with cheese on it. You want a hamburger without cheese. Yeah. And Kerry over here, he doesn't want a bun. He's he's on a protein thing. What burger are you going to make us that makes us all happy? There isn't one. So, well, the the one thing that's a little more consistent than transmission fluid is where to get a good battery. And when it comes to batteries, I particularly like Interstate Batteries. We carry them at our shop because it's a brand that's been around forever. It's not a fly by night, relabeled, repackaged, uh, no name, generic brand. It is a good brand that has warranty from coast to coast. And uh, I always feel like if I sell somebody something and they happen to be across the country and there's a problem, I want them to be able to get it warrantied out. That's why we use Interstate Batteries. We check every battery that comes through our shop. Batteries cause more issues with cars that go, you know, they, they kind of kill a car slowly. So have your battery tested. It may still start the car, but it doesn't mean it's running all the electronics at full capacity. Anyhow, when we come back, we've got Mark and Gilbert, we've got Stanley, and we've got Greg and more open lines at 602-277-5827. You're listening to Bumper to Bumper Radio.